But I see a lot of content creators fade away and they fade away because they don't adjust their content. So something might work for three, four months. You might be super popular doing one thing with the, like creating a trend. Awesome. Good job. But then you'll notice that they start to fade away and that they're, um, it's not that their content is bad. It's just that you have a thing called audience fatigue now. I'm really excited to have an amazing guest here today. Kyra Sokai dives into all sorts of topics that are usually not covered on your average podcast. This is going to be a special episode. Mental health is a huge part of today's society and needs to be in check for us to perform to our maximum potential. Kai has developed a massive following of close to a million fans or followers across Instagram and TikTok, which he loves to call Vibers, which I, I really like that you kind of made a community there. So today we're going to dive into how he's done such a good job at creating content, building community and turning his passion into his full-time gig so kai thank you so much for jumping on thank you uh, so much for inviting me I, I that was quite flattering the the intro <laughs> that you gave it makes me feel good about myself today i like it <laughs> that's the idea that's the idea <laughs> uh, okay so i think just to give people a bit of a background i always like to ask kind of you know when you first meet someone how do you kind of explain what you do like, give me one or two sentences of like, hey, I do this. And this is what joy, happiness or value I bring to people. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the easiest way to describe my platform and me in general is a mental health humorist, right? I love to add some levity to the conversation about mental health because it is such a dark and uh, a difficult topic to just kind of talk about in general so i try to add levity to it i try to make people feel uh like they're heard that there's other people that that go through what they go through and hopefully at the end of the day it makes them feel a little bit better yeah i think uh you know everybody listening should go check out uh, kai's content especially on tiktok and instagram i think those are your two main platforms but the the range of topics that you cover and then you tie into mental health is really impressive which we'll dive into in a minute but um, let's go back a little bit. How did you sort of get into this? How did you turn this topic of interest that you had into, you know, your full-time gig? You seem to have these social platforms going. You seem to have Patreon going, speaking events, uh, all sorts of different things happening. Um, how did you sort of go from just maybe having an interest in this topic to making it kind of like your full-time gig? Yeah, well, first off, I don't sleep, so there's no sleep. That's how I get everything done all at once. I heard, I heard sleeping's fun. I guess I got to give it a try one day. Um, Overrated. But, um, I mean, <laughs> honestly, it was one of those things where um, there was a lot going on in my life, and I felt lost. I, I didn't know which direction I wanted to take my life, and it got to a point that I'm like, I have to make a change. I have to do something uh, in order to to move my life forward in the way that I want it to move forward. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to document this, uh, the the way that it kind of continues and my, my journey here. So it started out with blogging. You know, I just would just write blogs about my day and, you know, the things that I'm feeling and, and things that I'm going through. And then that kind of turned into, okay, I'm going to film my blog. And then it kind of turned into, okay, I'm going to put it, uh, you know, on, on um, you know, social media platforms. And it started out with Facebook. Uh, and then a little platform called TikTok decided to just come onto the scene in 2020 and change the game for everybody. And uh, I was very fortunate enough to to kind of catch like the second or third wave of of that. And, you know, it kind of went from there. And yeah, it, it, I'm very, very fortunate to have the platform that I have. Yeah. And I think the other thing that you do really well is the the content that you release on TikTok. Like you've nailed the the format, the view, the style, uh, maybe give us a few tips on how to manage a good TikTok account because you have, yeah, yeah 800,000 plus fans on there, tons of engagement, comments, people having discussions in there. What was, mm -hmm. what was some things that you did on TikTok? I know, you know, getting in earlier also helps, but what are some things that you did to keep growing it and to keep building on that momentum? And how'd you get to the point of producing those really good uh, TikTok snippets? Yeah, that's a great question. So uh, I always tell people, number one, uh, consistency and patience will always be your friend, right? So at the end of the day, you want to stay consistent with the uh, with the type of, of content that you put out there. Um, you want to also just stay patient with yourself. Not every video is going to go viral. You can't let numbers determine whether you're a good content creator or not, right? 
Because what people end up doing is they end up comparing themselves to like Charlie D'Amelio or like Jason Derulo. And when they're not getting those types of numbers, they're like, oh, I suck. No, that's not how it works at all. You know, you kind of have to bring it back and put it into perspective. So what I would do with myself is say, okay, I'm going to put out this video. Maybe 100 people will see it. Maybe 100,000 people will see it. I don't care. As long as I can help at least one person, then it's worth it. Right. So when you kind of start to shift your uh, perspective in that way, it kind of changes the way that you go about judging whether something is successful or not. I can't tell you the amount of times that I get like a DM or an email or a message from somebody saying, hey, I watched your video about such and such uh, and it helped me here or it pushed me in this direction and I feel better now. Like that, that is success to me. Like that is like, okay, I feel like I'm in the right, I'm going in the right direction here. So um, patience, consistency, and like just, keep pushing forward find out what works what doesn't work and um and the last thing is uh, encourage engagement so you kind of mentioned it before Hmm. when uh the algorithm on any of these platforms see that people are engaging with you and answering questions or having conversations in the comments that the algorithm takes all of that into play right so you have to like encourage that to to, uh, take place Hmm. got it and i think you know you obviously cover mental health which is always a little bit of a tricky tricky topic yeah. i know uh yeah. you know th- there's a fine line between helping educating or maybe like offending or stirring up bad emotions from past past trauma or whatever it may be um how do you sort of toe that line or how do you create that engagement or is there anything that you do specifically that really gets your community or vibers kind of like going in the comments or uh, yeah. you know yeah. really no, I, call, the I call them vibers i call them vibers because it's so weird to call people my followers it makes it feel like i have like a cult <laughs> like it's like come on followers come it's follow true. me into the it is true like <laughs> so i call them my vibers but um it's a great name though. Uh, i love it yeah it kind of worked out so i'm glad that people mm-hmm. like are, are cool with it um yeah there's actually a couple of, of rules that i follow when it comes to talking about mental health number one uh, i never punch down right i never mm-hmm. make fun of of people or or situations you know i try to make every piece of content relatable as opposed Mm -hmm. to offensive right uh number two uh i mainly only talk about things that i'm diagnosed with right so that's anxiety depression and Mm -hmm. adhd so you won't find me doing too much about like ocd or you know uh being bipolar uh borderline personality disorder like that kind of stuff i'll kind of i'll i'll steer away from i'll educate myself on it um, but I'll never make, you know, the the humorous content surrounding that because mm-hmm. I'm not in that I'm not in that realm. So I don't I don't want to try to make fun or or find humor in something that I don't fully understand. Um, so yeah. I try to stick to those rules. And I also I just listen to the audience, you know, they'll let you know if something's like, hey, that kind of crossed the line or that, you know, that made me feel a certain way. You kind of have to like listen to what they say and you'll kind of get a feel for what's OK and what's not. And vice versa, mm-hmm. the audience will get a feel for what kind of content you put out there and then they'll mm-hmm. decide to either follow you or not. Yeah, it's true. Not everybody's going to be a, a, a fan or like what you do, but that's just mm-hmm. the nature of having the Internet. Everybody can yes. tune in um, <laughs> and people will definitely let you in. know when they don't like you. They'll definitely let you know when they don't like you. <laughs> yeah, well, that's interesting because uh, I was talking to, uh, on another episode, um, someone who kind of like rebutted flat earthers. Mm. Super interesting mm. <laughs> niche to be in. Yeah. But he would do science back arguments with people making crazy yeah. claims on YouTube. And he was like, yeah, the more upset or angry, the longer the conversations go, the more engagement and the more the more views seem to come in so like honestly you kind of have to play that game as a content creator right because there are certain things that i'll do purposefully knowing Mm. that people in the comments are going to react a certain way right because and and when they're typing out stuff it's like okay cool that video is still playing in the background thanks appreciate you (laughs) you know um so that's part of being a content creator you know is and and when i say encourage engagement I don't just mean saying, hey, comment down below. Like, I mean, like you, like say, saying things that you know for a fact, people are going to mm-hmm. be like, wait a second. Or people are going to be like, oh, I want to reply to this or whatever it may be. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's one piece that a lot of people are missing. It's like, how do you create conversations from your content? It's not like stop yeah. telling people things, mm-hmm. ask them questions. Mm-hmm. And then what's your take on responding to comments? Like, you know, you're obviously not 
again, it's hard to give out kind of like advice on this topic in the comments. So how do you sort of toe that line? Because I know there's some people listening that might be in kind of like those a gray area uh, yeah. niches that maybe, you know, there's doctors or scientists or whatever who have done all of this. And then you've also got to kind of give value, but you don't want to kind of overstep into being like, Hey, this is not legal or financial advice. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah I, I try to engage with, you know, the people that watch my videos and comment as much as possible. There are certain, like it's, it's, it's impossible for me to comment on everything. Uh, but if I, if I do find myself with like five, 10, 15 minutes in my day, I'll just kind of go through, you know, recent videos and, you know, just see what people are saying and commenting back on a couple of them, just so they know that I, I do see these, I do see comments. I do see all of this stuff. Um, and the key, this is one of the biggest mistakes I see content creators make. There's always going to be that one person or a group of people that are going to say something in your comments that are, that are saying it purposely to push your buttons, right? It's better to just ignore them. Don't give them the time of day. That's what they want. They're going to be more upset with you if you ignore them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, they're going to be more uh, upset. They're like, pay attention to me. Like, that's what it's going to be. So, like, when you engage with the people that are um, trying to, to disavow your platform or, or your, your message, whatever it may be, that's exactly what, what they want. You're playing into that game. Now, there's a couple mm -hmm. times when, when I will respond it's, uh, to like something negative. And that is whenever, um, you know, somebody's talking about like a specific group of people or if somebody like clearly misunderstood what I was saying or mm -hmm. um, if it's so ridiculously offensive <laughs> or, yeah. or anything like that, I'll, I'll, I'll respond or delete the comment because I don't like yeah. that kind of energy. Yeah. No, I totally agree. And then, um, Taking a look at kind of where you are now, can like the whole, you know, where it started, where it ended sort of thing. Um, you know, was there anything that happened that kind of like skyrocketed or propelled? Was there a tipping point of, you know, you'd been making content for, you know, months and then all of a sudden like one piece worked really, really well or you figured out something specifically that started working? Was there any moment in time that you could be like, hey, this was probably very related to that growth? <laughs> You know, it's really funny because I had this conversation uh, recently with some other content creators and we were talking about that very question. Like, what was the thing that like kind of put you over the top? And um, for me, luckily for me, like throughout the, I would say three years that I've been on TikTok, there's been about like three or four different phases of, of mm -hmm. my TikTok career that uh, that kind of put that kind of pushed me further and further. So the first of which was um uh gilmore girls believe it or not so i uh i'm a black guy and black guys don't normally watch gilmore girls <laughs> so i decided that i was gonna watch gilmore girls and document the entire experience and people loved wow. it i was like oh okay cool that's <laughs> right? such a good so idea push me. uh yeah right and then the second thing that that kind of happened sometime later is uh i started interrupting thirst traps so what people would do, mm. uh, I would interrupt a video like of, of a guy about to take off his shirt, like he's about to do it. And then I would hop in and remind people to do something like, hey, did you brush your teeth today? You know, like, like things like that. And people love that. Uh, and then and then the third thing was the mental health side. So like I was always kind of doing like the like the underlying lining mental health side of things. But it's like these little one off things that really just kind of pushed, <laughs> pushed a lot. So like. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, without without the Gilmore Girls side of things, without the there's trap interruption things, you know, um, I don't I don't know if I'd be where where I am today. So I mm -hmm. I I don't do the, the that piece, that kind of content anymore. But like I I owe them a lot of uh, a lot of thanks for that. Yeah, well, I think it's it also comes down to creativity, doesn't it? Like these platforms really reward creativity. So if you can do yeah. something creative, then you're going to get rewarded with it. And then once you have the platform you can start adjusting it to what you really want it to be. Yes, uh, that's the key right there is adjusting, mm -hmm. right? Because what people, what the, I see a lot of content creators fade away and they fade away because they don't adjust their content. So something might work for three, four months. You might be super popular doing one thing with the, like creating a trend. Awesome, good job. But then you'll notice that they start to fade away and that they're, um, it's not that their content is bad. It's just that you have a thing called audience fatigue now. Right. People yeah. want are starting to want to see uh, other stuff. They want to see new trends. They want to see all that type of stuff. So you have to be able to to adjust what you're doing in order to have a long term mm -hmm. uh, uh, success on any platform. If you're not able to do that, 
you're, you're going to have that one trend and then you're going to fade away. And you can't blame TikTok for that. You can't blame Instagram for that. That's all in you. I can't tell you how many times I see content creators blaming the platform for them not being successful. And I ask, I'll ask them a question. It's like, okay, well, what, what new content have you put out? Well, I did this and this and this, and it was successful for the first six months. Six months? Yeah. Of course you're going to fade away. What are you doing now? Are you doing anything new? No? Okay, well, that's not the platform's fault. Let's yeah, go. Yeah. Let's give you something. Let's give people something new. Yeah. No, it's a really good point. Uh, I think a lot of people don't think about it. They kind of like stick to one thing and they just keep keep repeating it. And then, yeah, yeah. wonder why their follower or engagement or that sort of stuff starts going yeah, down. The platform, they'll be like, oh, the platform hates me. or I'm shadow banned. No, <laughs> that's not. That's, there's no, and to anybody listening that knows what shadow ban is, there's no such thing as shadow banned at all. Do, have you ever heard that phrase before, shadow ban? Yeah, I've heard a lot. Yeah. 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 There's no, <laughs> there's no such thing. I think it's, yeah. it's an easy excuse to, to blame for your content not doing well. That there's mm -hmm. no such thing as shadow ban. TikTok yeah. doesn't want you to be unsuccessful because if you're unsuccessful, you're not going to use the app. They want mm -hmm. you to use the app. They want you to be successful. Mm -hmm. They're not going to purposefully prevent you from being successful yeah. by like purpose, like on purpose. Like that's not a thing. Like they want you to, to be successful. So like don't, no, no, yeah. no such thing as shadow ban. Just fix your content. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree with you. And you know, if you've done something wrong, then you should just ban your account. So <laughs> don't even worry right. about the shadow right. ban. They would, <laughs> yeah. They don't play games. They, if you, if they didn't like your stuff, they would just get rid of your account. Like that's exactly plain and simple. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 hundred percent. Okay. And then moving more a little bit over to the business side, um, you know, to do this all day, every day, you still gotta get paid. You still gotta pay expenses. You still gotta live your life. Um, how have you kind of found different ways to monetize your content or turn this into a bit more of a business? Because like, yeah. it's great having a side hustle, maybe creating some content on some passion that you like, but going back to that day job every day kind of sucks. How, when was that <laughs> point that you, when was that point where you could start doing this full time? And then what were some of the ways that you were able to make that happen? I'm going to blow your mind right now. Are you ready? Are you sitting down? Are you ready? I am. Don't know about listening. I, I, <laughs> I, still, I still work a full-time job. I still work a full-time job. No way. I, do. I know. Yeah. I know. So I'm, I'm actually, I'm the executive, I'm an executive director at my job. So I, I have a pretty okay. important job. I work nine to five um, and, and I do, and I still make all of the content that I make. And I'll tell you how I do it, right? Because it's not super hard. It, it, it's a lot of work, but it's not hard. I'll tell you what I do. Just don't sleep. It's all about <laughs> yeah, right? no sleep, number one. <laughs> and number two, you have to just plan it out, right? You can, you can uh, create one piece of content and create different types of uh, content based off that one content. So like what I normally do, I'll write a blog about a certain topic. So let's just say I'm writing a blog about ADHD, right? And within that blog, it's, you know, five different, you know, things that happen when you have ADHD, right? You can, I could make five videos of one for each of those things that's already written. I could mm -hmm. create an image, uh, an Instagram image that has, uh, you know, just highlights the, the stuff that's in there, right? Just like little bullet points. Uh, that's, uh, I can, um, uh, I take my tweets that I just put out there normally and I make an image out of that, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Um, like it's, the, it's that kind of stuff. What I usually do is on Saturdays and Sundays, I'll kind of plan out as much as I can. Right. So like on a Saturday morning, usually from like, I would say like seven to 12 is strictly content creation or content planning day for me. So like, I'll write the blogs, I'll record a podcast. I'll do a bunch of different things from seven to 12. Right. And then from there, at least the, for that upcoming week, everything is pretty much started already. So like, I'll usually know what I'm going to talk about or what jokes I'm going to make ahead of time. Sometimes I'll, I'll even film it that day. So I'll film like five, six, seven different videos. I'll be wearing different clothes, right? Mm -hmm. But I'll film like yeah. five, six, seven different videos that day. And then, then, then just divvy it out during the week, you know, or, or schedule it out. So like, I try to just kind of, you know, dedicate a certain amount of time to content creation and then making it seem as though like, uh, like it's, uh, you know, I, it, I, I am working on it every day, but like, mm. it's not in the way that people think. Yeah. So you're really hustling over there because the amount of content you're pushing out, the amount of things yeah. you're doing is crazy. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, it's hard. But yeah, it's, it's, congrats it's, to the organization. It's not, hard. it's not hard. It's just it's all about prioriz- prioritization and and mm-hmm. just organizing your day. It's not impossible. People make things a lot more difficult than they should. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? It doesn't have to be that way. Uh, yeah. I'm a one man show. You know, and mm-hmm. and I push out blogs and podcasts and and videos and YouTube and Instagram. But I push out all of that. It's just a matter of planning it out, and I enjoy doing it. Yeah. So no excuses, all you listeners. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Can I sit over here running the- an enterprise? <laughs> <laughs> and then in regards to monetization, everything I do is monetized. So my Instagram, my uh, my uh, TikTok, my blog, my podcast. Uh, plus I have like the brand deals that come through as well. So everything that I do, mm-hmm. uh, I'll go into it saying, okay, how can I monetize that? And it's not from a, like a greedy, like, like Scrooge McDuck kind of like dive into money kind of thing, no, but it's like, if you're going to work, if you're going to put the work into it, you mm-hmm. might as well get paid for it and, and get paid the right way and know your worth and, and know what, know what your time is worth and yep. your time, your talent, whatever you're offering. So like get paid for it, take that money and go on vacation, whatever you want to do. Like. This is really cool stuff that you can do on here. Yeah, that's also something that I see people getting a lot more motivated. Like with any habit that you build or anything you do, there needs to be some sort of reward for you to keep wanting to do it. And, Mm -hmm. you know, that reward might be a small thing. It might be going out for dinner. It might be going on a holiday. It might be whatever. But, yeah, you still need to factor in that reward. And I think there's something that needs to change in the way that people think about monetizing it because currently just big corporations are the ones monetizing all your content you're just creating all this content for free for them and not monetizing it so content creators need to start kind of thinking about the business side of it a little bit and being like okay well how do i actually get paid directly rather than giving all of this money to the big corporations um yes so i think think long term think mm -hmm. long term always think long term the the money side of things is not going to come immediately it took me a while to get to this point but it's okay because i i knew that i was going to get to this point because of the way that I was being patient and, and consistent, right? Mm-hmm. I knew that it was going to pay off literally, right? And, and, and it is now, right? Mm-hmm. So like you have to, you have to think long-term. Don't think about one video going viral to cure all your troubles. No, mm-hmm. I, like I'll, I'll, I'll even tell you, I make on social, like all together, including brand deals and blogs and podcasts and Instagram and TikTok. I bring home probably about like $5,500 a month just mm-hmm. from, just from social. Yeah, right. That's just and that's, that's, a, that's on average. Right. Mm-hmm. And it's, I'm not, and it's not, you know, anything too crazy, you know, well, a lot of if I jokes. were to really legit, <laughs> like, you know, right. Like legit, if I were to like legitimately go full time content creator, like mm-hmm. I can see how people make living off of it. And I'm not even like one of the big, big, huge ones, you mm-hmm. know, like I have a big platform, but like, like there's some people that like, I, I have like a million overall. There's people that have like a hundred million. 200 million, mm. 400 million uh, followers. Yeah. Like that's insane. <laughs> yeah, it is wild, but I do agree with you. I think, um, I, I do think more content creators need to think about how they monetize and, yes. and rewarding themselves for the work that they put in. Cause it's a lot of work. Um, I know you don't think so, but. <laughs> <laughs> it's only cause uh, I'm used to it now. I'm, I'm, I'm used to it now. <laughs> okay. And then, um, few quick questions uh, just before we wrap up. Um, you know, there's a lot of people in the space, you know, creating content, um, whether it's mental health or uh, in any other smaller niche of that. But how do you kind of, do you think of how you can differentiate? And if you do, how do you feel like you differentiate from some of the other people who are sort of on similar topics or in a similar niche? How do you sort of make yours a little bit different? Because I feel like everybody needs a little bit of spice to their own content or a little bit of their own yeah you know, formula to get people to be like, Hey, I actually like this guy versus this guy. Right. Right. Uh, the answer to this is going to be so simple. And this is another one of those things that people overthink, right? Be yourself, be Mm. you, you are already different than anybody else. Be you be genuine. And you're going to stand out because you're you, right? So you don't have to ever pretend to be something or somebody that you're not. You can be you. And before you say, I'm not interesting, yes, you are. Every single person has something to offer. Every single person has a story to tell. And people, there are people out there that want to hear your story. There are people that want, are very interested in hearing your story. On top of that, I never even view like other content creators in the field that I'm in 
as like competition or anything. I mm. I 100 I go watch their stuff. I see what works for them. You know, there's some things that I'll emu- emulate. I know that they watch my stuff. We'll do we'll do a lot of like a lot of times we'll do collaborations in that mm-hmm. way as well. Um, because that the goal technically is to get we're all on the same page. We all have the same goal. So it's like okay, how can we get our message out to as many people as, as possible? Right. So mm-hmm. like that kind of stuff, like be yourself, collaborate and just go watch what other people are doing and you'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love that. Um, getting ideas from other people, definitely a good, good option for inspiration. Don't go out and copy, but getting inspiration is needed. Um, mm-hmm. Okay, great. And then I noticed you kind of do speaking engagements and all that sort of stuff. Um, I feel like this is a good one for a lot of people to take advantage of in terms of how to monetize. But at what point did you feel like, hey, I could start doing this now? Like, was there a yeah, that's good. was there a point that you were like, okay, I can start offering this now? Because mm-hmm. um, I Absolutely. think a lot of people hold back for possibly too long. They could be doing it, but mm-hmm. they're like too shy to do it, or they feel like, you know, I don't have anything interesting to say or whatever it may be. Okay. What's your advice on flicking that switch to say like, hey, I actually am a speaker and I can come and speak at your event on these topics? Absolutely. Great question. So uh, it's funny, we're having this conversation because in about 24 hours, I will be in Detroit, Michigan uh, as the keynote speaker at a, as an event. Um, so first, the first thing you always want to do, if you want to do any kind of like speaking engagements is always know what your goal is, like what message you want to get across. For me, it's good. Like any, any speaking engagement I do is like, okay, I want to talk about good vibes, positive energy and protecting your mental health. You know, mm-hmm. I, I'll, I'll start there and work my way back. Okay, what personal story can I add into this? What mm-hmm. things do I do personally to help me achieve any of those things? Um, do I have uh, uh, insight or knowledge from other people that I can apply into this? What research have I done into those three topics, right? Once you have all of that figured out, you're able to interweave yourself into all of those answers. And the next thing you know, you know, if let's just say I, I were to do, um uh good vibes good vibes positive energy mental health right like three topics right let's just say you were to do 10 minutes on each of them right that's 30 minutes of speaking plus a 15 minute q a session that's 45 minutes right there it's not that difficult just start at the end with what your goal is and work your way back right Mm -hmm. don't start at the beginning (laughs) because <laughs> then you're going to get lost along the way know where you want to go mm. and then you'll figure out how to get there um so that that'd be my piece of advice and then from there you know just some um, practice <laughs> you know I, I would i would always practice doing uh free webinars you know mm. i always um take any opportunity to just kind of like hone my skills in that way and it got to a point i would say this was before the pandemic i would say 2018 2019 is when i started feeling comfortable like actually going out to like businesses and and events and and speaking and telling my story and uh then from there i mean it kind of kind of blew up because now i have footage of me doing this and you know people are like oh hey i heard you're a good speaker let me hire you or how much do you cost you know stuff like that so um yeah it's that just start from the end and work your way back yeah okay that's great advice just like hone in on three topics find the teachings find a relevant story or example and then have yep. the Q&A to just structure your presentation. And then it sounds like getting started is just starting small and it builds over time. But I, I love the idea of just doing literally free webinars or free live sessions. That's a great way to get started because all you need is one person in the audience to be like, hey, I know someone who would benefit from this. Can you come do this um, event Feel, for us? Yourself and put it up on, on YouTube, you know, or mm. whatever you may, whatever you want to do. You, you have an endless amount um, it's kind of like when 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 people are like, I don't know how to start on social media. Well, you start by just doing it. Mm. Just do it. Just start. Start posting something. It may not go viral, but like at least you're going to start to get a feel for it. Yep. You know, just just do it. Yeah, and the more you do something, the easier it gets. So I think yes, you know, even if nobody's watching, you're still getting value, still building yes, that skill set. Absolutely. absolutely. Um, mm-hmm. Awesome, Kai. Well, really appreciate the time. We've covered a lot of stuff here. Uh, I think. A lot of values being given in all sorts of areas, you know, growing socials, content, um, just structuring yourself in a way that you're very efficient with your production. Um, where can we go find more? Where can we follow up? Where can we learn what you're up to? Uh, give us a little bit of a direction on where we should go to uh, kind of become a viber. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, you can start. Uh, my my windows are open today, so if you guys want to just peek into my window and just see what I'm doing during the day, you're more than welcome to know. Okay. Um. <laughs> Um, uh, so the easiest way is just to visit my website, thevibewithkai.com, uh, and you'll get, you know, you'll be able to navigate all the things that I, I have from my podcast, to my blog, to all of my social media platforms, um, to my Patreon, you know, whatever you want <laughs> that I have, or if you just want more basic information about me and who I am and what I can offer, mm-hmm. thevibewithkai.com, everything is there. Nice. And I'll add all those links as well. That's Super easy for you guys, but hopefully uh, you got a lot of value out of this. Um, I love that you're talking about mental health, especially in recent years. I know it's a huge, huge thing that goes kind of unattended a lot of the time, but it is one of those key success factors if you do want to live a happy life, if you do want to perform at work or whatever it may be. So, you know, I think you make it a very friendly and approachable uh, topic. So congrats there. Really appreciate it. I try my best. You know, I try. I try. (laughs) All right, Kyle. Thank you so much. Really appreciate you coming on and have a great rest of the day. Thank you. Thanks so much. Hey guys, we put a bunch of effort into making great content for this YouTube channel. So please hit subscribe, uh, leave us a comment, hit like, and tell a few friends about it.